Hello folks and welcome to this Sunday edition of Decision 2016 Digest, August 9th, 2015, and what a week we've had. The very first big debate, we're going to focus a lot on that and other headlines of the news as we try to bring them to you in 10 minutes or less. And let me tell you, it's going to be a race. Yes, folks, this week was the very first GOP debate, a record 24 million people tuned in to the uh, first GOP debate that was held in Cleveland, uh, hosted by Fox News. Uh, it started off with a bang. I'll just cut to the chase. Uh, first question from our friend Brett Baer. I hope you enjoyed him on Pops Radio this week. I had him on Monday to give us a preview of the debate. The first question was uh, to raise your hand if you'd make a pledge not to run as a third party candidate. And uh, the only one who raised their hand was Donald Trump to a mix of applause and boos, but he sat there on the stage and declined to rule out a third party run for President of the United States while participating in the very first GOP debate. It was an interesting twist at the beginning of uh, the uh, of the debate, and I will tell you Donald Trump wouldn't make the commitment. Of course, he explained it later, which we'll talk about. But uh, there was a very mixed reaction starting right off at the beginning uh, for Mr. Trump, and of course, Rand Paul, who's fallen uh, pretty precipitously in the polls since he announced his presidency, or is kind of stalled, uh, took the moment to make his mark and suggest that he was a, a Democratic shill or uh, was planted there and is hedging his bets uh, on supporting Hillary Clinton by not taking that pledge. So uh, Mr. Uh, Rand Paul tried to make his mark right there early on. Let's talk a little bit about some of the highlights. By any stretch of the imagination in the main debate, there was a uh, undercard debate, so-called undercard debate, which the, with those that did make the top ten, we'll talk about that at the end. But here in the main event, the top ten candidates were there, and uh, by any stretch of the imagination, Rubio, uh, uh, Florida Senator Marco Rubio, was his moment to shine. Although young, he looked presidential, he had commands of the facts, and he got off a couple of good shots uh, on his potential uh, Democrat opponent, the presumptive nominee, uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh, former neurosurgeon Ben Carson, uh, he just charmed the place. He won his, uh, his participation uh, with his humor. Uh, a late entrant, which knocked uh, Texas Governor Bill Perry out of the top ten, or Rick Perry, I'm sorry, out of the top ten. Uh, was John Kasich, and uh, he gave a textbook performance and uh, more of an establishment type uh, uh, participant. Uh, uh, Ted Cruz was on form. You know, everybody talked about his debate skills and history in college. Uh, he had a solid performance, but nothing really of a standout. Huckabee was Huckabee. He was very conservative on the social issues, got off a couple of good one-liners, uh, one and actually made people cringe a little bit, talking about pimps and prostitutes paying their fair share of taxes. And, uh, you know, it was a lackluster performance from uh, Wisconsin Governor uh, Scott Walker, who I personally like a lot. And when I say lackluster, I don't mean that in a negative way. He was just a yeoman, uh, kind of a calm, uh, methodical in his participation. Uh, but didn't really didn't light up or have a standout moment. Let's talk a little bit about the low lights, and of course, uh, as you can imagine, uh, some of them uh, attended to uh, uh, to Donald Trump. Uh, in one question, which I will have to admit uh, that Megyn Kelly fired at him, which I felt was a little snarky about some of the things he tweeted about women that were, I guess, less than politically correct. Uh, he uh, decided he was going to challenge Megyn Kelly and uh, suggest that he's been nice to her and maybe he shouldn't have been, but uh, didn't want to go there. But it was clearly a tense moment between uh, debate moderator uh, Megyn Kelly and the Donald, and uh, it made headlines. Uh, the other big fireworks piece of the uh, debate was when Rand Paul and uh, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie got into it over NSA data collection in the Fourth Amendment. Many of you may know Christie's a former federal prosecutor and is the only one uh, in the presidential contest who have uh, tried and convicted 
9-11 terrorists and uh, other uh, terrorists uh, here in the United States. Uh, he locked horns over uh, national security and the NSA's role in that. And, uh, you know, there was uh, some personal swipes by both of them at each other. But uh, I will tell you that I really felt like uh, Rand Paul came off as kind of whiny and petulant. Uh, a little bit of a smirk. I've always thought he was a little uh, thin-skinned. I like a lot of what he stands for, uh, but I just don't know that he has presidential t temperament in my book, and I think it showed in his clash uh, with Chris Christie, who I say got the better of that. Uh, the, pres the early presumptive front-runner, Jeb Bush, uh, uh, former Florida governor, uh, had a pretty flat performance. He seemed a little nervous at first, uh, but he got into a rhythm, but it was uninspiring and very, again, when I say textbook, it's very matter of fact, very factual, uh, but no, uh, no real uh, fire in the belly, if you were. People said he looked like he was either tired or bored. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of things have come up about this debate that the questions were questioned. You know, I was a little taken aback by how aggressive and how negative uh, the first round of questions were, both in the earlier debate with the uh, seven who didn't make it and then the top ten in the main event. I thought the uh, questions were pretty hardcore. Now, our friend Brett Baer, who was with us on Pops Radio on Monday, uh, suggests that uh, uh, what they threw at them is minor compared uh, to what the Democrat and the uh, Clinton machine will throw at them in a general election. And so the idea was that um, uh, that this was a test case to see if you could handle the heat. At least that's what he said. But moving on with that, Fox News has been highly criticized, not only about the questions, but uh, Megyn Kelly's uh, seeming attack or out to get uh, uh, Donald Trump. She was ravaged by the Trump Olympas, I call them, uh, his followers, who are a unique uh, crowd. I spent a lot of time on Twitter. They're exceptionally... Uh, aggressive, exceptionally uh, uh, crude and rude, uh, if you dare say anything about Donald Trump, but they have ravaged uh, Megyn Kelly, and I've seen uh, some Twitter memes about boycotting her show because of her performance here in this debate, and I guess they thought that Fox News is supposed to fall in line and be shills for the GOP, and while they cover from a conservative angle, there's nothing wrong with asking tough questions, and I'm going to side with Megyn Kelly on this one. Uh, I think she was overly snarky uh, with, uh, with Donald Trump, and I think it may have been a little bit unfair, but you know what? He's a big boy, and he should be able to handle it, and it pales into comparison what a face in the general election. But uh, I, I thought the Megyn uh, clash was a little contrived, and I don't like it when the story becomes about the media person, i.e. Megyn Kelly, than it does us getting the information and the policy discussion that we need from the candidates in these very important uh, debates. There's also been a lot of talk about how they changed the formula and all these conspiracy theories that knocked Perry out of the top ten. They should have included Carly Fiorina, the only woman on the GOP side, in the main event. But I think that worked to her advantage. I'll talk about that in a little bit. On the post-debate spin, I will tell you, uh, uh, again, I talked about Megyn Kelly getting attacked, but Trump's response late Friday night on CNN where he suggested she had blood coming out of her eyes and, quote, blood coming out of her somewhere which we took to mean she was being hormonal and it was a very misogynistic insinuation. Trump has been ravaged here uh, Friday night, all day Saturday, and here into Sunday morning as being, uh, it, it's not even being politically correct. You can be politically correct or not politically correct and not be an asshole. And that's what he has been on this whole Megyn Kelly thing. He's whining too much, he's protesting too much, and I'm gonna suggest to you he hurt himself. So much so, he was scheduled on Saturday, yesterday, to speak at Red State, uh, the Red State Convention in Atlanta, and late the night before, uh, they uninvited him to speak because of the nasty comment he made on CNN about uh, Megyn Kelly's uh, uh, 
I guess, cycle, if you will, and everybody took it that way, even though he is suggesting he meant it was coming out of her nose. But in any event, uh, despite all the criticism, our friend Brett Baer uh, has uh, gone on the record, says they stand behind all the questions. The rationale is if you can't handle Fox News, you're not going to be able to handle the heat uh, when it comes to a general election against the Clinton machine, and I'll take him at his word. The biggest winner of the whole debate is somebody I love to death and I admire immensely. Carly Fiorina was in the very first debate uh, with the uh, seven who didn't make the main event at five o'clock Eastern time that same day. And I'm going to tell you, if there's anyone out of both debates to me that looked presidential and could carry the day and that I would be comfortable sitting in the White House, it's former HP CEO Carly Fiorina. Every time I've heard her speak, every time I've heard her do an interview, and her performance in the debate, she looked more presidential than any three candidates in both debate. And on our post-debate radio show on the 405 radio with my colleagues at the Gang of 405, I said that Carly Fiorina won both debates for her performance. I hope you get to see it. And if you're undecided or want to know more about Carly Fiorina, I suggest you find out about her because she is fantastic and she earned the kudos that uh, she got uh, based on her performance uh, at Thursday night's debate. All right, well, we're going to have to uh, talk just a little bit about our uh, other news headlines and wrap it up. Senator Schumer, the leading Democrat and candidate to replace uh, Harry Reid as Senate Major Minority Leader in the Senate, has decided to vote against the Iran deal that Obama is a proponent for. So he is a key Democrat voting against the Iran nuclear deal. It's crumbling around. Everybody is suggesting and seeing that it's not worth the paper it's written on. Stay tuned to that. Our future depends on it. A nuclear Iran is not safe for anyone. Uh, the FBI is now looking into the email server with Hillary Clinton. She is going to continue to have trouble with that. This takes it to a new level in that the FBI has announced a probe into the email server with Hillary Clinton and her dishonesty about emails, and they're investigating it right now. This week, plan to see more debate fallout, and uh, on Monday morning, uh, tomorrow morning uh, at 10 o'clock Eastern, I hope you guys will join me at uh, the 405media.com. I will have CNN anchor Jake Tapper on with me live on the show to talk about uh, some more analysis of the whole debate situation. But in any event, we're going to have to wrap it up now. Uh, do me a favor, though. If you like what we're doing here, give us a thumbs up. And please, please, please subscribe to the channel. It lets me know you enjoy the effort we're putting out here. I put a lot of links at the bottom to the 405. There's a link uh, to my radio show site if you want to learn more. There's also a special link to get you a free trial in a free first book download at audible.com, also down in the description. That's it for now. We're going to wrap it up. Thank you for listening. That concludes this August 9th, 2015 edition of Decision 2016 Digest. I'm Scott Jones. We'll see you again, and thanks for watching.